Hey there guys, I'm uh, just going to try and do a short little video for you on how to replace the multi-function switch in a 1991 C4 Corvette. Uh, I've got a problem that uh, I'll show you in a second uh, you might be familiar with where the blinker stalk has gone floppy for a, uh, a right turn. I can't put the right turn in indicator on. Uh, I can put the left turn on but um, I can't turn it off manually but it will turn off by turning the steering wheel. Uh, so I've been doing a bit of reading up uh, and I've found that it seems to be a fairly common problem but what I haven't found is any sort of video or step by step tutorial on how to fix it. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do uh, while I'm working my way through trying to do this. So the problem that we've got, uh, if we can sort of come around here and show you, is when I try to turn the right hand blinker on, the blinker just sort of flops up. Okay, I can turn the left hand blinker on, but then I can't turn it off. Uh, though I have found I can get my finger in here and manually cut it off. Now, what's actually kind of going on, uh, I don't think I can actually show you in there, but there's, there's a little bit of plastic uh, on the switch inside here that connects to a switch. When you push that blinker up, it should move the switch. Uh, that little bit piece of plastic has broken off and I can actually feel it sort of down inside here. Um, so that's stopping the blinker from actually activating the, the switch down here. So we've got to try to work out how to actually get into this. Um, this shroud is sort of one piece over the top and over the ignition barrel uh, at the side here. Um, you might notice too, uh, for those of you with a good eye, um, I'm actually sitting on the right hand side of the car. So for those of you in the US, this is an Australian right hand drive conversion. Uh, so I'm not sure how that's going to make things different, but um, as I said, this is a bit of a learning experience for me. Um, so we'll see how we go. Okay, so the first thing we've done is just to, to disconnect the negative of the battery. Again, this is a right-hand drive car, so uh, it might be a little bit different to, to yours, but disconnect the negative. Uh, and then around here, uh, for me on the passenger side, for you on the uh, driver's side, possibly, um, but the, uh, the fuses, okay. For safety, I've also just pulled out the, the airbag fuse there, okay. So... Once we've done that, I let the car sit for half an hour, and this is just going on stuff that I've learnt from uh, from sort of reading uh, online. That seems to be the recommendation. Disconnect all the power, let it sit for half an hour before you touch anything. Okay, so after disconnecting uh, the power, uh, we've then removed the trim panel that normally sits here. So I've already done that before I started deciding to make a video, um, but that uh, is just a matter of disconnecting a couple of screws. Um, I've also disconnected the, uh, the bonnet release um, over here, which, which is attached to that. Again, might be different for a left-hand drive car than it is for my right-hand drive. Once we've done that, go into the wiring harness down here and you'll find this bright yellow cable. That's for the airbag. All right, so I followed that back till we found a plug and I've disconnected that plug. Okay, so now the power is disconnected all the way back up to the, the airbag itself. Uh, and then we can start removing the airbag module. Uh, and that's by way of removing these little screws uh, here, both sides of the steering wheel. Okay, there's two of those. Um, it's a torque type screw. And that's where I'm at at the moment. So I'm going to pull those screws out and see how we go. All right, so those torque screws have been pulled out. Okay, and now I find this airbag module is loose and can come out. All right, so it looks like I just need to disconnect that plug as well. So I'll just do that. All right, so we disconnected uh, the plug from the airbag. Um, it was just a slightly sort of uh, tricky. Uh, had this little blue, uh, where is it there? This little blue lock pin uh, that sort of locked it into the, the other half of the, the plug. Just needed to pry that out, just pulled out with my fingers, uh, and then you could um, lift the tab as usual and disconnect this plug. So, airbag 
safely out now and out of the way. Don't have to worry about that exploding. Um, so then we've just removed the, uh, the nut uh, from the steering shaft, which is that nut there. So just loosening that um, with, a, with a socket and ratchet as per standard. Um, steering wheel remover put in and, uh, and then I've just popped that steering wheel off. So that now is loose, ready to come off. Um, so I'll just need to feed these wires out uh, as I do that. Uh, let's see how we go. There we go. That's out. Steering wheel's off. Alright, so we can put that to a side and work out what we do from here. So I'm just looking at this uh, this warning notice here and thinking that this is something I probably should have mentioned. Um, I was following a, um, a workshop manual on how to uh, remove the airbags and one of the steps that it did say was to uh, lock the steering in a straight ahead position uh, and then remove the key. So the car was, um, was sort of parked uh, with the steering wheel straight uh, and then the steering locked, the key removed from the ignition so that it can't turn and I have to be very careful uh, to make sure that it doesn't get turned um, before I reconnect it. This warning is basically saying that an improper alignment um, of the, the coil um, it can damage you know cause damage or cause the airbag to explode so we obviously don't want that to happen so before you start just make sure that you have done that. Okay, so going through the workshop manual looks like the next thing I've got to do is actually remove this module, um, which is a matter of removing this little snap ring inside there, removing that snap ring and then pulling this off. Now, further to, to that last sort of uh, uh, comment that I made about the alignment of the steering wheel, it seems that this unit itself has to be uh, aligned. You can see this little notch at the top there, which sort of sits in that space there. So. That's what I need to make sure when I'm reassembling this. Um, looks like there's a bit of a procedure of um, uh, making sure that you put this on properly. So um, we'll hopefully get to that at the reassembly stage. Uh, but right now I'm just going to work on getting this snap ring off. Okay, so we've got the snap ring off. Now we can remove this uh, and we just sort of slide this out. Okay, and then just sort of let it hang by the wire there while we work on this. So we're starting to sort of get in there now and um, we'll go have a look and find out what the next step is. All right, so the next step here is to remove this locking plate. Um, and I've, I've done a bit of reading to try and find out what I need to do there. We needed a lock plate removal tool. Uh, I didn't have one. I phoned my local uh, car parts uh, spares or tool place and uh, they didn't have them and um, so rather than stopping and waiting to get a tool I've um, I've just made one up so I've just bent up a bit of uh, flat bar to make this u-shape um, drilled the hole big enough to fit over the steering shaft and use that nut so that allows you to compress this down and then you can see just in there you can see there's a, a split pin um, so we just need to press the plate down enough to be able to get that split pin out, uh, which is what I'm about to try and do now. Alright, took a little bit of working, but uh, finally got that split pin off. So you, you loosen it off, and just when you think you can uh, move forward, there's a, a second groove down in here uh, that then the split pin drops back into, so you've got to... Uh, get it out of a groove twice but um, there we go we got that out uh, and now this will just slide off okay there we go so that is stuck onto the back there leave that all as one piece and we're in there so we'll uh, have a closer look and see what the next step is all right so next we're going to just remove uh, these two screws here uh, which hold this bracket on that goes into the, um, the blinker stalk um, but then I'm noticing after that we need to remove the, uh, the three screws in here here and here 
Um, now, if you flick the switch up uh, to turn right on the blinker, um, that then gives you access. So before I remove those screws, I just uh, push that up. So hopefully that's going to make the, the next step a little bit easier. All right, so after pulling that out, you can actually see in here, uh, well, at least I can, I don't know whether the camera can, but in there you can just sort of see that little bit of sort of white color. Uh, that's where the, the piece of plastic has broken off. So the, the broken piece is actually the bit in there. Okay, that bit that you can just sort of see moving there. So that's the bit I need to work out how we get to. Um, and you can see the, the bit that's broken off, this um, bracket that I've just pulled off has got this little uh, knob on the end. That sits in there when it's in place uh, and gets activated when the lever goes up or down. So that's what's not activating now that the bit of plastic is broken off. So uh, I'll keep working away, see how we go at trying to work out how to get to that bit that is broken. All right, so the next little snag I've run into is that I can't pull this out. I've taken all the screws, can't pull this out because of the, the wires. Um, so it appears that this ribbon here is the wires that that's attached to. You can see when I move those wires, that's moving. So I need to try and disconnect these wires, but I've... I've pulled that plug off down there, which seems to be the plug, but everything's sort of all uh, cable tied up down here. So I'm going to try removing all of these cable ties, uh, and hopefully I can get enough play to actually um, pull this assembly up and out of the way to allow me to get in and uh, hopefully get to all the other bits I actually need to get to. So we'll give that a try and see how we go. Okay, so that was successful. Uh, I've allowed me it's allowed me to pull that up uh, so I've just sort of pulled the the cables up as far as I can there um, it's given me enough slack to actually pull that up and out of the way and I'm thinking that these three screws uh, with the Torx fitting on them are the next thing that I need to pull off to uh, I'm guessing remove that housing so I'm going to give that a shot and see Alright, so I've removed those, well removed two of them and sort of loosened that screw there, but, um, uh, well it's loosened all the way out, but the housing doesn't want to come out. I'm thinking that the ignition barrel is what's holding it in, so I've got to try and work out how to remove that. There's a Torx uh, screw in behind here, which I'm hoping is what's holding that barrel in. Uh, we'll see how we go. Alright. So I did find, uh, as I was trying to pull that all apart, um, there was this little piece, uh, so it's contacts, that um, sits in there. I'm thinking that uh, that connects to the horn ring. Um, that was sitting in there underneath, well, sort of held by this little spring clip. I don't think you can sort of see. There, just in there is a little spring clip. So that was pressed down and the uh, the contacts were sort of sitting in up above that. So I needed to pull that out to actually be able to get to this screw. Um, but I have managed to loosen that screw now uh, and get it out. If I can draw it back out. So it's a long, long screw. Uh, well, it's got a long pin on it at least, which obviously is what holds the, um, the ignition barrel in place. And with that out, the ignition barrel does slide out. It's still connected by this wire. Um, so I'm just going to have to see what I need to do, whether I'm just having that loose is enough. So this has got a bit more movement on it now, but it doesn't quite want to come free. So I will keep looking, see what I can work out. Alright, so with a little bit of perseverance, I've managed to kind of wiggle this loose um, to separate it enough from the back half of the, the cowling um, that I could get in and get to the plug that the cruise control wire was connected to inside there. Um, so I've been able to separate that. Still trying to work out how to get this um, wiper stalk out. I uh, 
I've read something about that it just pulls out, but I'm without wanting to put too much force on it, that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, so I've got to do a bit more investigation to work out how to remove that without breaking anything. Um, but also while I've had it apart, I've managed to find this, which is the culprit of the problem I'm having. It's the, the little piece that's broken off uh, this assembly inside here. So uh, that's the problem. Uh, still got to just work out how to actually get, you can sort of see that broken uh, broken section just in there. If I take my finger away, try and focus on that. You can see just in there, that's where that part has broken off. So uh, I'll keep persevering and try to work out how to get this bit off. All right, some success. I managed to get the wiper blinker stalk off. Um, as I had read, it did just pull out. Uh, it just took a fair bit of force, but eventually it, it kind of popped. So you can see it's just got a, a little sort of ribbed end on it. So I'm not doing much of a job of focusing on it. There we go. So yeah, bit of force and that did just pull out. Uh, so now it's trying to work out how to actually get uh, the broken part out. And uh, there's a pin just in there, which is actually quite loose. Uh, and I found that I can just push that out and take the pin out. So there it is, pin that's holding that in. And now this part is loose just still connected uh, to the wiring harness so uh, I'll see how I go with trying to remove that. Hey everyone we're back again uh, it's been just over two months now since I uh, started the last video uh, I'm doing this work in the middle of the, the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, getting the spare parts has been a little bit tough um, so just after I finished dismantling everything on the last section of the video, uh, I went and ordered the part. Obviously with me being in Australia, I had to uh, order the parts from the US. Uh, and with the difficulty in getting parts out of the US, it's taken uh, eight weeks for the parts to, to actually arrive. And so there it actually is. Uh, that's the part that has finally arrived. From the US. Now you can see there that little uh, part just there. That's the part that had snapped off on my old unit. So this this actual sort of piece here had just completely snapped off. So this is a replacement um, second-hand unit. Uh, it looks to be in good order. The, I can't see any sort of cracks or any sign of that being brittle. So. Hopefully this is going to last me uh, for a little while once we work out how to get that in. Uh, I've got to say a big thank you to uh, Larry at uh, 20th Street Auto Parts in, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, who's been excellent with getting this part and following up for me with the difficulties in actually getting it out of the country. Um, I was getting a bit worried that, uh, that we were never going to get the part, but finally it's arrived. Uh, so now I've got to try and remember what we're doing on the beast uh, and, uh, and try and work out how to, to get the old part out where we were up to and, uh, and get the new part in. So one thing that I have just found as I've been looking at things and trying to work out what I'm going to do next uh, is that I'd actually disconnected... Uh, the, the wrong plug that I thought was for that multifunction switch. Uh, this is the plug here that I had disconnected. Um, that actually appears to go to the other wiring harness um, up here with the blinker mechanisms and everything else. When I looked at the new unit, uh, I realized it had a plug that looked a little more like that and, uh, and that one there. Uh, and that sort of led me to have a bit of a search and, and find this one. So 
I've now got to work out whether I'm going to try and pull that through, which is what I'm thinking I will do, and take the whole thing out and replace it. Uh, the backup plan on that was to, to sort of cut the wires and reconnect it, but looking at it, I'm thinking that trying to find somewhere in amongst all of this wiring um, that's going to have enough room to be cutting and rejoining wires uh, and then getting everything back together in one piece is going to be quite difficult. So I am going to go down the path of trying to remove the whole thing in one piece and uh, and then threading it all back in in hopefully one piece as well. So stay tuned, we'll see how we go. All right, so we've got some progress. I've managed to pull the cabling through the steering column. Uh, now I just attached a piece of uh, uh, piece of picture hanging wire basically is what it is. So just some thin wire um, that I've attached to the plug so that as I've pulled it through um, I had some way of pulling it back if it got stuck and also hopefully um, drawing it back or drawing the new one back through. Um, this was quite tight getting through here. Um, so I'm not looking forward to trying to get the uh, the replacement in there, um, but we'll see how I go. Now, one thing that I did do as I was pulling this all apart was there was this um, plastic sheath uh, that uh, that went in here. Um, I pulled that out. I've got to try and remember now how it goes back in. Um, but I pulled that out um, to just make life a little bit easier. Um, there's also a, uh, a little plus, a little sort of metal spring uh, that kind of just fell out of uh, of the, this housing as I pulled it off the the column. Um, I don't know where that goes, so I've got to try and find out what that was connected to. Um, so that I can get it back in place when we put things together. I'll let you know when I work. Okay, we've had some success. So here's the new replacement switch. I've managed to thread the, the wires back through here, down through the steering column, and there's the new plug. Now, everything's through. Uh, so now I need to just go through the process of reassembly and uh, might have to look back at some of my videos to try and remember how I did it um, but I'll start reassembling and um, I'll let you know if there's anything that I find out that's critical as we go. Alright so we haven't got too far and we've hit a little bit of a snag. I found this little spring clip inside the, the housing here uh, and I wasn't sure where it came from and I've been trying to work that out um, as I've gone back over my uh, video of dismantling everything um, I'd made a comment about this little piece um, that we'd removed from, from in here underneath the ignition barrel um, that there was a, a metal spring clip holding it in place that metal spring clip's not there so aha this is it now the difficulty I've got is just trying to work out how to get that back in. There's there's a toggle that you can just see underneath the ignition barrel there in that little hole. Um, that's loose. Uh, so if I try and sort of show you, uh, you can see that, that that sort of moves up and down. Now that locks in um, on that uh, on, on this part. Um, the difficulty is that that's got to be up to slide everything in but I've got to have this in place to put the screw in so I'm, I'm kind of not too sure at this point how I'm going to manage all of that um, but I'll keep playing around and uh, see how we go. Okay, success. So it was one of those rare occasions you get when uh, playing with cars where something was actually easier than you thought it was going to be. Um, the shape of the spring clip that sits over uh, this little plastic contact uh, had, a, had a sort of shark's tooth end on it, if you like, that as you pushed it in, uh, it pushed that toggle up. So basically I put the ignition barrel in, um, tightened up the screw, uh, put the spring over the, um, the contact, the plastic body of the contact, 
and pushed it in um, and and that worked fine problem solved so uh, we continue okay and there we go everything's back together um, no other surprises so far hopefully it all works when we test it out but uh, basically reversal of everything that we did to pull it apart um, and all went back together pretty cleanly I've just got to finish uh, tidying up the mess of wiring underneath um, the dash here and put all of the, the trim back on and uh, then we'll give it a test and see how it goes all right so there we are all done uh, all went back together fairly well I was surprised I was expecting some difficulties but um, no real dramas uh, I've tested the car everything seems to work well uh, taking it for a quick test drive and uh, it's all good so there you go um, that's how you replace a multifunction switch in a C4 Corvette uh, and I hope that it's helped you guys out